3-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. everybody welcome to Ella J oh my gosh this has been a crazy morning we had all this plan this plan this do this fix this it ain't happening but we are gonna have a fun fun day and it's gonna be a fun day because um, somebody that y'all really really loved last week was on the show and when I hear from as many of you as I did and you say oh the house rocked because mr. Ella J was here Mr. LJ is here, and the first thing we realized is he forgot his sign that says the Mr. LJ Show. So everybody's been saying, oh, is Dwight going to have that woman on again? So basically, you have upbilled me, and you are now the control factor of this program. It is so funny. Um, all you have to do is do amazing music, and then people just kick me to the curb. So I'm gone. I'm history. And here you sit. Here you I sit. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but today you are going to share some of your favorite music, which is gospel. And I think it's pretty cool. I was reading the intro about your CD and you chose to honor your mother. I love that. And I was reading the whole thing and I thought that is so cool that you realize where your roots came from and why you're so structured because you had pretty awesome parents. Yes, I did. And, uh... Mom taught me a lot about music, harmony parts and singing, and uh, she put up with me tearing in the house at 3.30 a.m. and helped me get my equipment off of the van and where it belonged. Yeah. Uh, she just, oh, and she'd cook. Yeah. She'd get up and make food. I was reading that. At 3 a.m. Yep, yep. She answered <laughs> every call, even if it's 3 a.m. Yep, yep. Did you ever write a song about that? I did. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, oh, my I gosh. Did. Okay, when we um, did the parade and we kind of started a little talking about this and this and this, we realized we had some common denominators. And they were cars and um, my love for music, your talent for music. I know nothing about it, but you have really, you've kind of uh, aggravated me a little bit because you kind of misled your situation. You said, yeah, I can pick a guitar. You didn't say you can play every instrument known to man. And so I've now witnessed all of that. 
and last night I was lucky enough to meet your band and pretty awesome guys. Pretty awesome guys. Yeah, they're good boys. They really And y'all have been together how long? Well, me and the drummers played since 97, and me and Mitchell, Aaron, have played since, Lord, before that, uh, took a little break, and then now we're back at it. It's been many, many years for both of them. And you kind of play off each other really, really well. I watched that yeah. last night. <clears throat> and can they can I read my forehead. Yes. And, and can they I have a whole lot to work <laughs> with, too. Yeah, yeah. Can I tell people that in this phone is last night's session, but I'm not allowed to share it. I've been sworn to secrecy. Forbidden. Yes, forbidden, because we were missing the steel guitar player. And many of the songs feature that steel. Yeah. And you just couldn't <laughs> handle it. You just couldn't no, handle it. No, we can't be playing half stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Now, I chose, out of last night's session, I chose my favorite two. Could you guess which my favorite two were? Well, uh, Green River. Absolutely. I don't know. I don't know the other one. What? Uh, Stand by me. Stand by me. Yeah, I love that. <clears throat> that was song. a good job. We just lost Mickey Gilly too. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I wanted to ask you that last night because I said, "Do you like this song? Do you like this one? Do you like this one? Do you like this one?" Some of them you were kind of yeah, 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 a little of this, a little of that. Y'all were going over choosing music, and last night it was important to add some stuff that has a little ump to it. You know, where people kind of get excited and the the music yeah. really gets them going. Yeah, we need to add a few like that, and uh, it's hard though because you know you've invited a steel player, and he's with you on board, and right. it's hard to, to know, <clears throat> you know, you, you, you gotta you gotta do songs that include him, and uh, a lot of the songs I do don't from the past, but I'm gonna rethink this whole thing. We're go we're gonna get some things together. We're gonna put some uh, some more songs on our set list that have a little snap to them. Well, you know, sometimes we forget, <clears throat> and I have to write down stuff, and last night about 2 a.m. I wrote down a song, Holding Things Together. Have you ever done that song? Many times, Merle Haggard, yes. Yes, I love that song. It's a good song. I love that song, and today, I want you to tell a story about two songs we're gonna end with today. Okay. One of them is, <clears throat> is the one that I really, really zoned in on. Love it, played it for my daughter. She said immediately, Mama, give me that CD. And I said, I can't, I'd have to shoot you. <laughs> I can't <laughs> give up my CD. So you gave me one for her. But that song, tell me a little bit of the history of the limousine song, because it happens to be, is it your most requested? Absolutely, by far. Uh, <clears throat> every time I play anywhere, there's always somebody that wants to hear the long black limousine. And uh, if I didn't play it, I'd probably get run out of the place. Yeah. And uh, I made a, I gave it another name. Uh, it's uh, all through the years, the Rebel Inn days, all those places I've played used to. And uh, I played a lot more back then than I do now, by the way. But I don't reckon there was ever a time when somebody wasn't, or more than one, was coming up to the stage and saying, Play that one about the Cadillac. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there it is. It's uh, <clears throat> it's the long black limousine. Very sad story. I sang that at a funeral one time. I had to rearrange some words. Oh somebody my insisted they wanted it at a funeral. Yeah. And, well, uh, I laughed and told my daughter that yesterday. I said, I want this at my funeral. And she said, Mama, don't ever say the word <laughs> funeral in your name in it. And I said, Dawn, I love this song. Um, you had a saying about what happened with it with Merle Haggard and what happened with it with you. What did you tell oh, yeah. me? Yes, what did you tell me? <laughs> well, I listened to Merle when I was just a little bitty boy, and uh, we had a little set on, my, my, actually my sister-in-law had a little uh, record player, and it sat on a table in her old house, and uh, I had, or got out somewhere and found a Merle Haggard record, and it had Long Black Limousine on it. So I listened to it 50 million times, and uh -huh. I played it and played it all my life. And yeah. uh, I did a big show up in town there not too long ago, and I made the statement that right, right as I started to do the song, I said, Merle Haggard sung this song one time, and he got a million dollars for it. I've sung it a million times and haven't made a dollar. <laughs> there you go. But, you know, we love it. If you need <clears throat> music for the money, you better get out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well... 
that song and the other song that we're going to end with today, you told me that you really had a special feeling for All I Have to Offer You is Me, Charlie Pride. Oh, gosh, yeah. Tell yeah. me why. I don't know. I just think my daddy used to, when I was a little bitty boy, daddy would take me places, and uh, he'd take me up to J.L. Burgess's and set me down on J.L.'s couch and say, now, sing All I Have to Offer You is Me. Oh, that's And I've sweet. sung it, and, and Buddy Manley and all these people. And uh, I, that was my song used to. I sang it all the time. I sang that song for, for my seventh grade graduation class in the old gym down there in town. And uh, it was a pretty special night. Some of you may remember that night. Oh, Teddy Oliver sang with me that very night. We sang All I Have to Offer You Is Me. Wow. And my mommy and daddy was in the audience. And uh, 1969, that was. That is so a long, cool. long time ago. That is so cool. <clears throat> now, obviously, you love the music. Um, you love writing. Would you rather do somebody else's stuff, or are you really that creative force that has to come up with something yourself? Well, there's no joy that I know of that matches the one where you write a song and it rhymes and it tells the truth mm -hmm. and you get to sing it. So there's where it's really at, those original songs. I love, I love writing them and, and working on them. How did you write I've Been Wrong Before? Lord have mercy. I won't call names, but a well-known <laughs> girl, beautiful girl, she's so pretty, she's one of the prettiest girls around here, came to me one day and, and we were talking. And her husband had left her. Everything was all wrong. She was, she was out of money. Uh, the thing was just not going good at all. Looking at a divorce and there was a house involved and, and I don't know what all. And uh, I just uh, started writing that. She left. She came by the pawn shop and we talked for a long time. And uh, she left and I started writing that song. Isn't that wild? Yeah, I know. And, uh, you know, and the, it is probably, is that your favorite of what you've written? You said you like the blue, Baby yeah, Blue. Yeah, I like my Baby Blue song. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. That one is a good one, too. But, you know, I just the words just came. Uh, the, the postman brought a letter. He said he needs my signature. See, that's not good news. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not good news. <laughs> and I got it all from her. I won't call her name, but you know her. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, She's doing good now, though. Yeah, yeah. You you overcome, and and that's funny because I found something that Mama. I was cleaning out some cabinets and going through some boxes. And says I admire people who choose to shine even even after all the storms they've been through. Yeah. So she went through the storms and she's yeah. shining again, and that's what life is about. You know, we we get through those moments that you're like, this is going to kill me, this is going to kill me, and then all of a sudden you go through that fog, cloud, whatever you're involved in, and life is better. And you're like, holy crap, I let that uh, get me that down, yeah. you know? Like, what was I thinking? They call it life. <clears throat> they call it life. Yes. They call it life. Well, speaking of life, you also like to do a song about jails, and I've picked out a place for you to do a song for a video. Mm -hmm. I went by the Jasper Jail, and I took a picture of the old jail, and I think that would be perfect for you to do a video of a song that you really enjoy. Now tell me why you like that song. Another one of them that goes way back. I've sung it all my life, and uh, it's by the Leuven Brothers. Is that the one you're referring to? About, uh, were you visit, visit me, on, me Sun on Sunday? Sunday? Yeah. Yes, yes. It goes back forever, and uh, just, a, just a good old storytelling sad song. Me and my old buddy Randy, that's Randy Produce Hyde, <laughs> uh, we used to sing that one in the seventh grade. My, my, my school teacher, the best one in the world, Ms. Marie Holt, uh, she, uh, she had me in the seventh grade and she spotted something, I don't know, but at the time I didn't know what in the world was going on, but now looking back I see she was just, you know, trying to help me along a little. And she called, she was over, uh, I think she was over the whole seventh grade or something like that. She called all of the classrooms in the whole seventh grade, everybody, for the other classrooms and everything. She had, uh, she'd call them in the room and we'd be packed in there like sardines. There'd be like three, three rooms in one room. And uh, I'd sit up on the corner of her desk and play that guitar and I'd play Visit Me on Sunday. And often, Randy Produce Hyde <laughs> would help me sing it. That's so and old awesome. Randy's passed on now, rest in <clears> peace, <throat> buddy. Mm -mm. And uh, 
and we had uh, we had some good times then. Miss Holt was the best teacher ever. Is she still around? She is. Yay, <laughs> She's yay. 101 years old right now. If she's not 101, she's about to be. Wow. And wow. Uh, and she's, uh, she's a good teacher. Yep, there you good go. Good woman. There good, you go. Good, good human. Well, I'm going to get the case from your CD while we're playing some music because we're going to yeah. go now to a commercial break. Okay. And then after the commercial, we're going to do two songs of your gospel CD. And then I'm going to read what you wrote about your mama. Okay. And share with people that truly that is where your love for music and where your love for life, I think, had to have come from your parents. Then Absolutely. we're going to do some more music, and then we're going to end today with the history of the Sanford family and all the. I understand you and Margie did some cemetery hopping this week. Boy, we did. We put <laughs> you flowers on out. everybody's grave. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and that is what Southerners do. We sit on the porch and drink sweet tea. We make flower arrangements yeah. and we go to the cemetery. That's Cran what we do. Cranberry juice. Yeah, cranberry juice for <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. But you know, when we look at um, this gospel music that you brought about, you've written some gospel songs. You've written some uh, of all different areas, and and you always come up with something cool, maybe from somebody else's life. But when you told me the truth about you, that you don't smoke, you don't drink. You don't, uh, something else we were talking about, smoking, drinking. I mean, you don't do bad stuff, but you come up with these songs well, that sound like a bar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't want to, you know, I don't drink and I don't uh, smoke, never have and never will. But, uh, Lord, I've got my problems. So <laughs> there don't you think go. I don't. There okay? you go. There's a lot of bad with that little bit of good, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, we're going we're gonna to go to a commercial break, and then we're going to let you hear a couple of gospel songs. Today is Inspirational Tuesday. We're always inspired to, you know, open your Bible, find a verse that really touches your heart. Do something that just really makes you feel special, and I think gospel music is one of the best ways to ever just get that feeling of comfort. And so we're going to share a couple of the, the two I chose first because they're really special songs. And then as we do later in the show, we're gonna do one called Supper Time. And I think that's one that everybody relates to. Everybody. Yep. And you think about the supper time at your family with your parents and what that was like. The very last few days of my mother's life, she would call me on the phone. She lived right out there from me. And she'd say, come home, son, it's supper time. Oh, my gosh. She'd have supper made. Wow. And then she died right after that. Wow. Well, we're going to share that music with y'all today, so stay tuned. Do not leave us. You're going to get to hear lots of music by Mr. LJ, who forgot his sign today. But <laughs> that sign will be back, I promise you. We'll be okay. back in just a few minutes. <laughs> you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. 
Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more.
Wow. Okay, we got some bragging rights right there. That gentleman playing the harmonica, tell me about him. His name was Wilson Frady. And he was how old? He was 83 years old when that he made this recording. That's crazy. And did he just, you, did you handpick everybody or did everybody just come together and want to volunteer? I handpicked them. You got to handpick them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Want, I want to share with the audience and our viewers because 99.9% .9 of the people watching the show know who you are. Unlike me, who had no idea who he was. You didn't know me. <laughs> She's, he's no. like, he's like, are you kidding me? You don't know who I am? I said, no, sir, I'm sorry I don't. You know who I am. All right. Anyway. This album is dedicated to my mother, Audrey D. Sanford. By the time you read this, my mother will be 74 years old. All her life, she has taken care of herself, made her own way, and never been a burden to anyone. What's even more, she has always taken care of us, always giving, getting us out of jams, listening on the other end of the phone line, when we need someone to talk to, getting up out of bed at all hours of the morning to cook for us after we'd finally come home from playing music and for putting up with all the equipment and noise for all those years. Mom, you have taken motherhood far beyond the call of duty. You give, one, you give love and understanding through thick and thin. This album and all my effort put forth to produce it are dedicated with love to you. I love you, your son. Now, that My words I right get there, cold folks. chills. I get cold chills reading that yeah. because, and this was done on 9 19 2000. Yes. And when did your mom pass? 2003. So for three years, she got to know how, yeah. how you know, not that that was the first time she understood how much you loved her, but, but you think about um, the influence and, and, you know, it's like the gentleman who was 83 years old playing on the music. Is he gone on to be with the Lord? He has, yeah. Yeah. So you think about those people who influenced you. Now, there's another gentleman we talked a little bit about yesterday, Mr. Ed Forrester, and you were supposed to bring me some of his music. And Dwight, yeah. where is it? Ed, I know you're watching. <laughs> I let you down. I went and found your CD. And? I like to never find it. I hunted and, and dug through everything, and I found the CD. I brought it and laid it on my bed so I wouldn't forget it this morning. And what did I do? <laughs> I love it. So that's yeah. okay though. Ed knows me and he understands. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now, yesterday you and Ed played with some truck tires on a tractor. Yeah. That was kind of your day. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I understand. I'm hoping I can be like Ed someday. <clears throat> someday. I know it's, an, it's, gonna, it's a long shot, but what a man. What a man. Yeah, he's, he's a good one. Now, you also love to play with engines, and I have been given the opportunity to see these amazing engines that are built and you have some great engine builders i haven't seen a 396 in your shop is there a problem do you have a problem yeah, we have a little problem in that department tell me what's going on the 396 is in my friend's basement he's building it and by the way it's his engine too i just don't have a 396. <laughs> yeah you need a 396 because yeah. that if i had one though it would be a 375 horse yes exactly yeah. exactly absolutely i know a thing or two about cars and yeah. can't tell by looking either yeah well you have you didn't get to see what donovan produced yesterday and um he did this it's music and cars and and all the kind of cars we all love and and it's like the gentleman who was 83 years old you said he pulled up in a yes. 71 chevelle he come to that recording session driving a gunmetal gray 71 chevelle 83 years old <laughs> That's his harmonica cool. in his pocket <laughs> what a man that wilson frady <laughs> Wow. Now tell me who he's related to. Nobody around here. Really? No. Wow. He, he's got family over in uh, up in Clayton, Georgia. Uh-huh. And uh So not from Max And Brady over here. around uh Buford, I think is where he came from, Buford, Georgia. It's where he's buried at. And uh he just walked in the pawn shop one day and pulled out a harmonica and I liked to fell over. <laughs> and that was the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. We sang in the pines, in the pines, we done that. And he he tore it up, and I said, "Yeah, we need him on a CD." Yeah, and you did it. You produced yes, it. Yes, we did. Okay, because today is Inspirational Tuesday, I want to share something, and I think this is very appropriate for today because it's entitled "An Instrument of Peace." When I see you pick up a guitar, you seem to be very at peace with the world you it it opens a door to you that not many people get to see you just it takes you into a different zone pretty much and so this is this is 
and I think it's so appropriate, an instrument of peace. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. <clears throat> Where there is sadness, joy. And I think that, if I ever heard of anything that describes a human being, that describes you. Well, thank you. That describes you because you're always bringing something positive, and that's not often seen in today's world. Well, you know, <coughs> don't worry. Be happy. Yeah. Yep, yep. As long as everybody's happy, it's yep. going to be okay. That's it. That's it. And um, I have a friend who had um, a biopsy <coughs> yesterday, and she said, ouch, ouch. And I said, hush, because I'm facing that. And I, I called her this morning, and I wanted to ask how did they do it and did it really hurt? And you have been kind of my comfort zone as I'm preparing for this thing because I've been listening to music and just and just zoning out of what's going on with me. And so you've been kind of like a prescription. Yeah. I said, it's kind of like the doctor wrote me a prescription. It said, just listen to music and you'll be okay. So that's kind of what I've been doing. And when she said, I had it and it was ouchy. And I'm like, I don't like the word ouchy, but ouchy's Ouchie's okay. Ouchy's not good, but. <laughs> It's okay. You know, <laughs> it's gonna be all right. Music is the doctor. Yeah, That's music really for sure. is. Music yeah. is the doctor. It is. Well, we're gonna share a couple more songs today, and then we're gonna talk about your family. Um, you okay. had said the supper time thing, so I had already chosen supper time, and 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 I chose the family circle because we all our family circle is getting smaller. Yeah. You know, I lost one of my children. Um, I buried my husband, I buried my mother, I buried so many people, it, it's like, what do you do when that family circle shrinks down to nothing? And now you have your precious auntie, but not many more family members. It She's gets small. She's the only auntie I have. Yeah. <clears throat> I had another wonderful little auntie, and she passed in, about a year ago in February. Lily, Aunt Lily Sanford, everybody thought, but it was, that she was my mother's sister. And, uh, it wasn't the Sanford that made us related. It's the it's the Davis part. But uh, don't have any more aunts now except little little Margie, and uh, all the family's gone. The immediate family's gone, and uh, uh, you know, if you live long enough, that's what you'll see. That's what happens. Uh, the family circle does get smaller. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go back now to some of Dwight's music and tell me the group's name because I forgot that last night. What's your group's name? We're not sure right now. It, <clears throat> you can't decide. It has been Ella J for a long time, but we're thinking about changing it. Why? Wow, when you're Mr. Ella J. Yeah, you might. That's, that's I, a good point. I don't think point. you need to change it. I no, know. No, no, no. No, I we think probably won't. if it ain't broke, don't fix it, Bubba. No, just leave we'll it just alone. Leave it just let it sit. Let Ella J is what we're all about. That's it. All right, here we go. We're going to go to a couple of songs that I hope will touch your heart because today is Inspirational Tuesday. Days of childhood, I used to play till the evening sun would come. Then wandering down an old familiar pathway, I could hear my mother call at set of sun. Come home, come home, it's supper time. fast Come home Come home It's supper time We're going home at last Some of my fondest memories of my childhood were woven around supper time And mom, I remember how you used to from the steps of our old home place. You'd always say, come home, son, it's supper time. What I'd give to hear that just one more time. But you know, time has woven a realization of truth that's even more thrilling. And that's when we hear that call from the portals of glory to come home for supper time. When all 
God's children gather around the table with the Lord himself and we celebrate the greatest supper time of all. Come home, come home, it's supper time. The shadows lengthen fast. Come home, come home, it's supper time. Okay, a little bit of family chain. We didn't do the whole song because we realized we are timing. We want to time it perfectly so you get to hear two songs at the end that I really love and he really loves. And so we led into this because we're going to talk family history. The Sanford family, and you told me yesterday, is it six generations? I think so. Yeah. Buried here in Gilmer yeah, County? Yeah, at the same cemetery. Now, what church is that? It's Crossroads Cemetery out on 282, right near... Pumpkin Center. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell people a little bit about the Pumpkin Center CD and why that was important to you. I made the Pumpkin Center CD of songs that I used to sing and hum and go over in my head while I was riding bicycles on those dusty back roads of Pumpkin Center and often pushing that bicycle because there's a lot of hills out there. <laughs> and uh, and we made, those, made that like that and uh, you know, it's just my, my grandfather named Pumpkin Center. Pumpkin Center is a place where on Saturdays way back in the 30s and 40s, people would come there and they'd sell things that they had. And there were so many pumpkins always, Grandpa decided it ought to be called Pumpkin Center, and that's what he called it. So there you he go. He named it, I ain't kidding. Bill Sanford and Paul Sanford, my uncle, told me this story. He told me about Bill, his daddy, naming Pumpkin Center. You come there on Saturday morning, there'd be pumpkins everywhere, among a few other things, but mainly pumpkins. And uh, those songs, I just, I just, they were running through my mind since 1965. And I thought, why don't we just make a CD? And I'm pretty proud of that too. Pumpkin Center's not a bad CD. No, it's a, it's pretty a good. good CD. Yeah, it's, it's been played a lot. I can tell you that it's been played a yep. lot. Now, um, the Sanford family, you said six generations, and um, I think who's, that's what it is. Maybe who's five, left out of cousins? Who's left out of, are there any cousins around in the area? Yeah, there's several cousins. Yeah, we got a lot of cousins hanging around. But they are thinning out, you know, it's my generation, yeah. Uh, we got a few cousins left, but all of Grandpa Bill and Linda's children are all dead except Margie. And uh, the... 
all of the uh, a whole lot like i said a lot of cousins are dead but we got some we, they're scattered all around the place you know the little house that was sitting by the road so close that you showed me that yeah. was okay who's what 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 generation grandmother was that grandfather it was my grandma uh, uh, first uh, grandma and grandpa okay and so that was in the 30s was that around in the 30s well no they, it was later on they, they they moved to that house actually from up on top of the hill in 1950 and uh and they lived there till their death grandpa died in in 1965 on december 23rd and grandmother died in 77. and out of all the land that we visited and and you were saying this is sanford and this is sanford and this is sanford and um did they farm it did they Lord, what did yeah. they do is oh, that what they gosh, did for a living yeah they yeah. did they did they they raised the biggest crops you ever seen. That whole field down there below Grandma and Grandpa's house was always tended, and uh, made syrup, sorghum syrup. My grandpa did. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Sir sorghum. No sorghum syrup. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, <clears throat> he had an old man, old old mule named Dan. It was white, and I remember that mule pulling the uh, the sorghum syrup mill. And uh, and he'd he'd make syrup. They'd come from Atlanta to from the Atlanta Journal and do stories on him. Wow. And uh, and he did that. And uh, he was a fix it man. He had his own blacksmith shop out there in the in the shed. And uh, my grandmother was the best cook ever. And she would uh, have these big dinners. Used to at Grandma and Grandpa's house on Sundays. Every Sunday, nobody visits anymore. You know the stuff, folks. Mm -hmm out there in video land have you noticed that no one visits anymore yeah and uh used to at my grandma and grandpa's house i swear they'd be they'd be 60 or 70 people gathered in because they had 14 children and then all the grandchildren come yeah. along and they'd, they'd be people everywhere and big dinners every sunday it was no special occasion it was a common event you know this is what we did all the time and uh, okay, I'll get off of that now. Now okay. you you tell me one of the things we were going to talk about today were sayings that are no longer said. So obviously you heard them from your grandparents. Yeah. So tell me some of the things that you remember because I told you Gosh. some of the things my grandmother said, and and it's like in my cookbook I would put the word you just put a teeny bit because that's what yeah. my grandmother yeah. always said. And yeah. people are like, you can't write a cookbook that says teeny. <laughs> And I said, the heck I can't, it's my yeah, cookbook. You can give directions. I used to give directions when I was a little kid. And you'd say how to yeah, go where? Yeah, yeah, you go over the road and turn back over the ridge, <laughs> and it's right there on the left. <laughs> and they go, what? Remember, too, if you get a hold of something you can't hold on to, turn it loose. <laughs> let her go, let her go, <laughs> let her go. Anyway, but I got uh, out there at Crossroads Cemetery, Bill and Linda Sanford are buried. That's my grandpa and grandma. Well, first of all, let's start George A. Amon Sanford and my mother, Audrey, are buried there. That's my mommy and daddy. Then you got Bill and Linda, and then you got Henry and Sarah. Her, they called her Sally, Henry Sanford and Sarah. That's Bill's uh, mom and dad. Then you got Hezekiah and Jane. That's wow. Henry's mom and dad. Wow. And they were buried there in 1916. And, yeah, I got some roots in this town called Ella J. Yeah, so they were born in probably the 1840s, probably mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Hezekiah came here from, uh, I think Ireland. Emil Sanford can straighten me out on this. I think they came from Ireland and settled in, in South Carolina and then later on moved up into Bucktown. And, and then after that, come on out to Pumpkin Center. Mm -hmm. Now, out of everything we've seen in the past few weeks, one of my favorite views happens to be very close to town, and you watched the lunar eclipse from there, didn't you? Boy, I did. I didn't know we was having one. Yeah. I was sitting there we admiring the moon. Me and my little Annie was out there admiring the big full moon, and it started getting weird. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> and it got weirder and weirder. And then finally, I was just like, well, I don't know what's going on with the moon here tonight. At first, I thought it was clouds, but it wasn't. Nope. And then I, I happened to glance at Facebook right quick, and it was talking about the lunar eclipse, and I thought, oh, so that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. And it got weirder and weirder, and then it shut plumb off almost, and then came back, and we had our full moon again. But did you see last night's? 
Last night's was absolutely gorgeous. I didn't. I didn't see it. It was. It was the prettiest moon I think I've ever seen. I was on the phone with a friend, and I told her. I said, "You go outside." I said, "Just go outside right now." I said, "The yeah. moon has never been prettier. It was absolutely gorgeous." I love the moon. I look at it often. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, when when we look at your history, your family history. There's obviously, obviously a lot of love and a lot of good memories. And um, are there any sad times? Did you lose anybody young in life? Did anybody, oh, you know, because yeah. I never hear tragedy come out of your voice. Bill Sanford died when I was nine years old. And that was, uh, boy, that, that threw me for a loop. And uh, he was a good man. I thought he was a giant, too. You ever? You ever look mm -hmm, back at things mm -hmm, like this? Mm -hmm. I thought Bill Sanford was at least seven feet tall. He was 5'2". Oh, my gosh. 5'2"? <laughs> <laughs> I have his driver's license at my house right now. 5'2". Wow. I thought he was Buford Pusser or somebody. <laughs> huh? Wow. Yeah. That's wild. Now, one of the things that I loved, um, your dad, military career. We are approaching Memorial Day. Yeah. It's a very special day um, for anybody who lost family at war. And you proudly display your father's uniform. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? It means everything. In my living room, he's on a... Uh, mannequin? Mannequin. We'll say mannequin. I think if it's male, it's 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 a... What do you call it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you got me. A I dummy? Don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know something like a weird Maybe. thing about that anyway. It's, <laughs> we'll say mannequin. He's a, his uniform is on a, on a mannequin and it's a guy, I don't have the gun, but it's, a, it's an M1 Grand uh, World War II rifle. It's not the one he carried, but it's just like it. And it's all there and it's got his hat and everything and, and the, the things he got. And it's right there in my living room. He, uh, he left here on October the 8th, 1943 for uh, World War II, and he returned April 5th, 1946. Said he never would, thought he'd return. Wow. And he even told me a very sad story. He said he put his head between his legs and knees that night on the plane flying over the ocean uh, and prayed for God to drop the plane in the ocean because he just didn't want to go. Wow. But he wow. went anyway, and he served his country, and he made it back home. Mm -hmm. That's how you got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you proudly display the flag that was on his casket. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's yes. pretty awesome. Well, I promised folks we're going to stop now and, and offer two songs that I love. They have nothing to do with gospel music, y'all. Nothing. But I think you're going to love them. And um, I love the opening and the beat to the first song. And then you love what it meant to somebody. All I have to offer you is me. So we're going to share those two songs with y'all. So when you look back at life, take the music that made you smile and play it every day and enjoy it. Last night when your band did Green River, I was just like, it was like I was back in Buckhead <laughs> and I was back doing, you know, and I was just loving it. Yeah. And, and that's what, we got to look back to the music and understand why the music made those times in our life really happy, really good maybe solved a problem during a sad time. It's just the music makes the man. And, and yeah. I think you can't say that any more than about Dwight Sanford, <laughs> Mr. L.J. If I like a son. song, I like it forever. Yeah. I, I never get tired of songs I like. And yep. that's what I listen to. Well, we're gonna go now to um, one that Merle Haggard did, but he made it famous. So here we go. <laughs> I wish I could. Their 
that new year in the city And now they finally brought you back to me We got to tell them bye because we yeah. ran out a little bit of music time because we were chit-chatting. But I'll tell you what, the music, the man, the town, um, serving LJ, serving from Ball Ground to Turtle Town, we know what you like and we know that you like his music. And thank you for all the sweet comments. Thank you for the emails. Thank you for uh, sharing. <coughs> Susan brought us gifts today. Yes. Susan brought Dwight a book and brought Sherry a 65 Corvette. So it's just like my Uncle Kim had. 
and I absolutely love it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And you got a book about the Beatles because Those you know you love the Beatles. Beatles yes. Thank you to our viewers who connect with us on a regular basis, for, where they're stopping him and saying, hey, I saw it and I liked it, stopping me and saying, hey, thank you for something you said about my mama, my daddy, whatever. It's all about connecting with you, and that's why we love ETC. From ball ground to Turtle Town, um, neighbors serving neighbors truly, and it is where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. And thank you, my good friend Dwight Sanford, for being here today. I appreciate everything you do to add a little laughter, add a, add a smile or two, add a little craziness. Be he's happy. Crazy. He's crazy. He's crazy, y'all. <laughs> but he's fun. He's a lot of fun. So um, thank you for joining us. I will see you again soon. Please say a prayer for me. Tomorrow I meet with a surgeon. Thursday I meet with another surgeon. And we're going to be slicing, dicing, fixing, taking out, repairing, and slamming it all back together. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC. Bye, Gern. <laughs> That's my dog. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or